Welcome to day three of Data Platform Week. My name is Colton, and I'm a developer advocate here at Daxter Labs. In today's session, we'll be covering the integration ecosystem, where we will discuss the general availability of pipes, the embedded ELT integration, and integrations with transformation frameworks like DBT, SDF, and SQL Mesh. Through integrations with popular libraries, services, and compute platforms, Dagster becomes the unified control plane for your organization. And through uniform interfaces, engineers are enabled to focusing on solving the problems that bring business value. At Dagster, we believe in a composable data platform. This allows organizations to choose the tools that are most appropriate for the job, allowing their platform to evolve as their needs change and their organization grows. This is accomplished by defining a standard way of writing integrations in the Dagster ecosystem. By conforming to a standard way of interfacing with tools, the once heterogeneous interfaces of the tools found in the modern data stack instead appear uniform, making it much easier to learn and adopt new tools, and additionally, simplify the complexities it takes to migrate between them. As a quick example of how this works, let's take a look at the code that one might write when integrating with some transformation frameworks. First, looking to integrate with a DBT project, we define a function with a multi-asset deck grader that takes in a DBT project object as an argument. Then, inside of the body of that function, we yield events that are returned from the DBT CLI wrapper. Now let's compare that to how we might define the assets for a project powered by SDF, a blazing fast transformation framework with a built-in SQL compiler and analytical database engine written in Rust. Similarly, we define a function that has a multi-asset decorator taking in an SDF workspace object for configuration, and in the body of the function, we yield events returned by the CLI wrapper. Looking at these two code examples side by side, it's clear that once a data engineer learns how to use one of these integrations, they don't have to be burdened by learning an entirely new way of defining assets for another tool that they want to bring into their data platform. We strongly believe that data platforms should be flexible in the tools, technologies, and programming languages that data platform engineers need when building pipelines. However, as the number of tools in the data ecosystem grow, it's more important than ever to have a unified control plane and observation layer to bring organization to these distinct systems and interfaces. By being able to orchestrate and observe all your tools in one place through Dagster's asset lineage, cataloging, and insights, it becomes much easier to understand the flow of data in your organization. Additionally, with frameworks like Dagster Pipes, you have a separation between the business logic of your jobs and how they are executed. In the example of Spark, this means that it's possible to orchestrate jobs running on compute platforms like Databricks, AWS EMR, or even local execution, all without needing to change the core logic of your jobs themselves. This opens up a lot of possibilities in being able to target certain platforms depending on the features that you need, preventing vendor lock-in and helping save cost. Today, we're excited to showcase some of the work that we in the community have been doing to build out this vision. On the agenda, we will cover the announcement of Pipe's general availability and how it works, a deep dive into using Pipes with Georg Heiler from Magenta, we will cover how integrations like Embedded ELT promote composability in the data platform, and we will close with a presentation on transformation tools, where we will cover how these concepts apply to our integrations with DBT, SDF, and the community-contributed SQL Mesh. We're thrilled to be making Daxter Pipes generally available, an innovative toolkit and framework that enables you to write your data pipelines in such a way that they can run on any platform in any programming language, all while getting full observability of your jobs through Daxter's metadata, asset lineage, and cataloging. By supporting arbitrary compute environments within the data platform, the horizon of what can be done with Dagster is drastically expanded. The wide array of tools being used within your organization can now be brought under the umbrella of Dagster's unified control plane, and the engineers in your organization can use the tools that they most enjoy and are most appropriate for the job at hand. So let's set the stage by describing the problem. Traditionally, when you would want to run your job in a compute environment that's separate from your orchestrator, for example, Kubernetes, you would start by writing a Docker file that includes the code you'd like to run, and you would define a command that invokes your script taking in the required runtime parameters. You would then override that command when you invoke your script from the orchestrator. In this case, we're using the Kubernetes pod operator and are passing in the start date in a configuration payload that's stored on S3. Then, in your pipeline code, you'd be responsible for parsing the individual command line parameters, and in this case, also pulling down the configuration object from S3 and parsing that too. There are a few problems with this approach. One, the engineer is required to maintain the mapping of parameters between the orchestrator and the script, increasing both the amount of code that's needed to be written and the maintenance overhead. Two, the use of command line arguments in this case are specific to our implementation running on Kubernetes. Some platforms may not support handling of arguments in this way, which would require you to write a completely different implementation for passing context into a remote process running on a different platform. And three, outside of the logs that are being captured, this process is a black box to the orchestrator and you can't make use of all of the features that make orchestrators so great. For example, handling of structured logs, providing context around data quality, and reporting metadata about asset materializations for cataloging. 
Dagster solves this complexity through Pipes, a standard interface between Dagster and processes running in remote environments. Here, you can see an asset that is making use of the Kubernetes Pipes client. Similar to using the pod operator, we specify the image that we want to run, but in this case, we are able to provide the Dagster context object as a parameter, along with a dictionary of extra parameters that we want to be accessible to our script. Having the context is nice because, as you may notice, this asset has a daily partition, meaning there will be a backfill of asset materializations for each day. That partition key is stored on the context object, which will be made accessible to your remote process directly. You don't have to think about how the parameters are being passed to the script running in Kubernetes, nor are we burdened by the overhead of using command line arguments. Moving over to the pipeline code, you can see that we no longer have the boilerplate required for parsing the command line arguments. Instead, we make use of the lightweight pipes implementation to instantiate a Dagster context object. From this context, we're able to access things like the partition key and the extras parameter, which we can then use in our processing function. After the processing concludes, we use that same context object to report an asset materialization back to Dagster with included metadata. You can see how much more simple our processing code is now that we have a standard interface for accessing Dagster's context. And the added benefit of this approach is this same code can be run in any of the supported runtime environments without needing to change a thing. So how does this work? We can break down the pipes implementation into three components. The pipes client that runs in Dagster itself, which is responsible for handling the remote process, for example, launching a pod in Kubernetes or starting a Databricks job. The communication protocol, which defines how information is passed between Dagster and that remote environment and the implementation that runs embedded in the remote process to parse the context and act as a way to emit events back to Dagster. Let's walk through this architecture diagram to better understand how Pipes works. On the left, we can see that the orchestration process is responsible for providing the context as a payload, handling the creation and deletion of the remote process itself, and reading the messages that are being sent back to the orchestrator. Both the context and the messages that are being communicated between these processes adhere to the Pipes communication protocol. In the case of our previous Kubernetes example, Daxer's context was encoded and passed to the Kubernetes pod, and then because our script was written in Python, we used the lightweight Python implementation to load that context. But the implementation in the remote process can really be in any language, because the protocol itself is agnostic. Additionally, the passing of information between processes can occur in a multitude of ways depending on the external environment that's being used. For example, if you're using Databricks, the context might need to be supplied as notebook parameters, or if there isn't a well-defined method for passing of data, an external location like S3 may need to be used. But regardless, the handling of the passing of data is completely hidden to the end user, and they are able to access the data that they need in a completely uniform way. We already have a variety of clients with support for external compute platforms like Databricks, Kubernetes, ECS, Lambda, and EMR. And we have lightweight pipes implementations for TypeScript, with implementations in Java and R coming soon. Because the communication protocol is minimal, we expect the number of implementations to grow rapidly, and we look forward to collaborating with the community to bring support for the workflows that they most desire. On the machine learning side, we also have clients for Ray, a framework for scaling ML workloads, and Modal, a serverless compute platform that makes it trivial to leverage GPUs in your workflow. Whether you have a high demand for GPUs while training models or a need for lighter processes during inference, Pipes makes it possible for your compute to scale independently from your orchestrator so that your infrastructure is in tune with your needs and cost is optimized. Once again, we're excited to announce that Pipes is generally available, and we're looking forward to seeing how the community leverages this framework. Pipes makes remote processes a first-class citizen in the orchestrator. It improves observability by allowing these processes to send meaningful data back to Dagster. It significantly reduces complexity by providing a standard way for launching processes and passing data, and it enables you to use the tools and languages that you most enjoy. Coming up, we have a presentation from Georg Heiler from Magenta, in which he'll demonstrate how he and his team have adopted Dagster Pipes for running Spark jobs on multiple platforms, all without needing to change the Spark code itself. They were able to flexibly choose whether to run their jobs in Databricks or EMR, depending on the features that were needed at runtime. For example, some jobs worked better with Photon enabled on Databricks, whereas other jobs could run on an optimized configuration of EMR to save cost. We're super excited to see the benefits that they've gained by using Pipes, and we hope you enjoy getting to learn from them as they share their real-world optimizations. How often have you written code to read data from a REST API and store it in a warehouse? What about replicating tables in a Postgres database, or even loading reports that land on an FTP server? Data ingestion and replication are both key parts of a data platform. However, the seemingly simple task of moving my data from one system to another quickly becomes non-trivial when you need to account for schema changes, type conversions, item potence, error handling, observability, and scheduling. If going through the motions of building these processes feels like a solved problem, that's because it is. 
Managed solutions exchange engineering time for money, which in some cases is a good bet. But in other ones, it's a negative ROI proposition that doesn't scale as your data platform does. But what if there was a better way? At Dagster, we've built Embedded ELT, a tool that harnesses the power of purpose-built tools, DLT, and Sling, letting Dagster focus on what it does best, orchestration. This approach gives you the flexibility of open source solutions while maintaining enterprise-grade reliability. Traditionally, using distinct tools meant losing the holistic view of your data platform. With Embedded ELT, you get full asset lineage of what's produced by your ingestion and replication job, essential metadata extracted from DLT and Sling out of the box, comprehensive visibility across systems in Dagster's built-in catalog, seamless integration with downstream models in your transformation framework. We've standardized the developer experience across integrations, dramatically reducing complexity while enabling choice. This means consistent APIs across different tools and integrations, simple switching between data sources and destinations, the ability to change from writing records to S3, Snowflake, or Postgres SQL with a single line of code, minimal learning curve when adopting new tools or changing existing ones. You may have seen our blog post, Sling Out Your ETL Provider with Embedded ELT, where we went into detail on how we started savings $40,000 a year by migrating away from a managed ingestion provider to using an embedded ELT package. And the good news is it's still running flawlessly today with minimal engineering maintenance. With many vendor solutions, the pricing model is unclear and the amount you're paying scales with the magnitude of data you're ingesting. So using these solutions for load-bearing systems like a production database is a non-starter. Additionally, many of these tools have built-in schedulers, something that you already have available through Dagster. And running your own script is an inefficient allocation of engineering resources. By leveraging the embedded ELT package, you get the best of both words. You save the engineering hours of reinventing ingestion and replication jobs, and you have no hidden pricing schemes tied to your data, and you get improved flexibility by using code-first open source solutions. It's about finding the right abstraction for the job that strikes the right balance between lightweight administratively and cost-effective. Traditionally, a disadvantage of using purpose-built tools is losing the holistic view of your data platform and ecosystem. However, with Dagster, you can have a single control plane over the tools you use for ingestion and replication. You get the full asset lineage of what is produced by your ingestion and replication jobs, which can be fed to downstream models in your transformation framework. Additionally, the embedded ELT package extracts essential metadata from DLT and Sling out of the box, including entries like identifiers for tables or files that are being produced, execution information, how many records have been inserted or updated. This makes it possible to get a comprehensive picture of what is happening across systems in the built-in catalog of Dagster. At Dagster, we have been working hard to standardize the developer experience of using your integrations. Customizing DLT assets from Sling assets is not too different, and the same can be said with our integrations with managed ETL providers. This layer of abstraction, which is consistent across integrations, makes it much simpler to swap between tools. So if you're familiar with one tool's integration, you can rapidly ship with a new one. In addition, tools like DLT and Sling make it simple to switch between data sources and destinations. With a single line of code, you can go from writing records to S3, Snowflake, or Postgres. It's time to stop reinventing the orchestrator within each managed service and instead take advantage of the fantastic tools developed by the data community. By embedding these tools within Daxter, it's possible to get a metadata-rich and unified vision of your ingestion and replication jobs, which can feed into your downstream models. And finally, by standardizing the integration APIs, Dagster reduces complexity and enables choice. Tools for managing data transformations have come a long way since the days of Perl, Shell, and Microsoft SQL Server integration services. SQL has become the undisputed lingua franca for data transformations due to its simple syntax and ability to handle complex logic. Data transformations are also the crucial link that turns raw data into business insights. They're where you define core business logic that standardizes metrics across teams, implement data quality rules that ensure consistency and reliability, create reusable building blocks that accelerate analytics development, establish a single source of truths for critical business metrics, document organizational knowledge about how data should be interpreted, and enable self-service analytics by making data intuitive and reliable. I remember writing transformation logic using pandas, and I wouldn't wish that experience on anybody. The first project I used DBT with was a breath of fresh air, SQL syntax, integrated testing, and a local development experience that made it much faster to get my stakeholders the data they needed. 
While the current generation of SQL-based transformation tools like DBT, SDF, and SQL Mesh has brought down the complexity of building production data pipelines significantly, we're still faced with a critical challenge. How do we maintain flexibility without creating silos? With legacy platforms, you had to pick your poison, unified visibility at the expense of cumbersome transformation logic, or easy transformation with data silos, or you'd be locked into a proprietary tool that doesn't play well with others. Having a composable data platform means you can incorporate new and existing tools that meet your use case without a lengthy evaluation and integration process. Data practitioners are gearheads, and when a new tool comes out, we want to try it and see if it makes our job easier and improves performance. Dagster changes this paradigm by providing a unified control plane that lets you easily embed best-in-class open-source tooling, support multiple transformation frameworks simultaneously, maintain centralized orchestration without vendor lock-in, and integrate new tools rapidly through standardized interface. Transformation tools have been a boon to developer productivity and brought down the skill curve necessary to build complex data transformations. But they fall short when trying to broaden their scope, and you end up with a silo around your transformation, the linchpin of your platform. But transformation tools lack visibility into their upstream and downstream assets, and the logic behind how the data is transformed is siloed in another tool, which becomes a problem for downstream consumers. Dax just solves this by providing a single pane of glass view into your entire platform, enhanced debugging and data discovery for engineers, intuitive data platform navigation for all data consumers, and complete visibility into how data flows through different transformation tools. This unified view is particularly valuable in enterprise environments, where different teams maintain separate projects but need to avoid getting siloed in specific tools or frameworks. Dagster's architectural approach to tool integration embodies our learn once, write anywhere philosophy. Whether you're using DBT, SDF, or SQL Mesh, the developer experience remains consistently familiar by design. This means when your team learns to integrate one transformation tool, they've essentially learned them all. The power lies in our standardized approach, one consistent pattern for integrating any transformation tool, standardizes interfaces for accessing external tooling and runtimes, unified authentication that works across your entire data platform, consistent metadata extraction and management from all your tools. The result? Dramatically reduced complexity without sacrificing choice. When your team adopts a new tool or switches between existing ones, they can focus on solving business problems rather than learning new integration patterns. This is what we mean by learn once, write anywhere. It's about eliminating the cognitive overhead of tool adoption so your team can focus on what really matters, delivering value through data. The power of Dagster's open source ecosystem goes stronger through community contributions, exemplified by the open source observers team's development of the SQL Mesh integration. Dagster is a unified control plane across different transformation projects, enabling organizations to orchestrate and monitor multiple transformation tools from a centralized interface. Beyond DBT orchestration, Dagster's flexible architecture supports the simultaneous use of multiple transformation frameworks within a single environment. The heterogeneous approach allows teams to choose the most appropriate tool for a specific use case, maintain centralized orchestration and monitoring, and track lineage across different transformation tools. And finally, focus on delivering value rather than managing tool integration. By providing a unified control plane that supports multiple frameworks, Dagster enables teams to make technology choices based on their needs while maintaining a consistent orchestration and monitoring experience. This isn't about managing transformations. It's about creating a flexible, future-proof foundation for your entire data platform. The result is a platform that grows with you as you adapt new tools and your requirements change and never locks you into a single approach or vendor. That's the power of true composability in modern data architecture.